And welcome back to United by Community Day here on Sportsnet 960, The Fan. I do want to tip my hat and thank Kelly Kirsch and the gang over there for just turning over eight hours of the radio station. It's pretty amazing, and they're awesome dudes for doing it. We thank you very much. And speaking of awesome dudes, we have two of them this hour. And this hour is brought to you by Remax. Remax, looking for a new home? Find coming soon listings at www.remax.ca. We've got a ton of questions. But it's story time with Lanny to start. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories, and especially a Jerome story. Uh, when I was still working with the Flames late in the 90s, <clears throat> uh, we were in Carolina. And after the game, I came out, and most of the players had already got on the bus, and I had gone over to a fence and was signing a few autographs, and there was about 40 or 50 kids there, and they were all obviously waiting for Jerome, but a lot of the players had walked right by and got on the bus. And Jerome come out, uh, he said, uh, guys, wait half a second. He goes on the bus and he tells every guy on the team, get off the bus and go sign autographs for three or four minutes. And everyone piled off the bus and that should tell you what kind of a guy, what kind of a leader and what kind of a community person Jerome is. Okay, well, I'll, I'll jump in and then we'll get to the questions. Jerome, I don't know if you remember this, but it was, uh, we were in uh, Long Island and uh, was practicing at the Nassau County Coliseum and we were walking out and there must have been 150 people. And we, we walked by them, and then we turned around. We couldn't see you. You were absolutely stuck in this <laughs> mass of humanity. I don't know if you remember that specific uh, incident, but I imagine you don't really miss getting mobbed like that, do you? Oh, that was... Uh, um, no, thanks, Lanny. Uh, no, I remember that in, in Long Island, that, that was... Uh, the players had nowhere to, the, to go. You couldn't get to the rink except, uh, so the fans knew it. And, you know, in my first early years, uh, I didn't quite, you know, people would bring a, a plaque and have like six cards and, you know, and then you want to, you know, and they'd ask for a stick and stuff. But after a while, you realize it's, you know, each year you come and then some of the older guys warned me that they were, um, you know, going to sell your stick or whatever. And at the time it didn't matter, but, I definitely over the years saw a lot of the same crew and that, that is one that uh, uh, if you, if you were a sports, a hockey fan, that was where you could catch all the players. We had no, that was the only path to the, to the rink. And that was pretty busy some days, but yeah, some days that'd be pretty tiring if we got to long Island uh, uh, late at night, but uh, it was fun. It was something growing up, um, you know, in the community, I remember uh, uh, going to like uh, Edmonton, it was in Edmonton, you know, growing up and going to the Coliseum and it would be a, a convention of, of say the Eskimos and the Oilers and, and, and stuff. I didn't get, I, you know, and I'd go around and get my football signed a little mini football by all the players. And it always meant a ton of ton to me to be able to, to see them and get them. And, and, you know, when I got home sometimes, so I'd look at the football and it'd be all like, I got too many signatures and I couldn't tell who it was anymore. <laughs> so that was pretty disappointing. So it was always important for me, but uh, I signed to try to have something, partially legible because uh, I remember those going, I have no idea. And I just spent three hours trying to get autographs. So uh, it was fun as a, um, uh, a kid. And it was also, you know, most of the time uh, pretty fun as a player. And, and uh, it's, it's part of it. it goes with the, the, the neat thing is when you're a kid, you dream of being able to, to sign some autographs. So in Calgary, it's fortunate to be able to, to do some of them over the years. We will get to the questions momentarily, but I'm desperate. I have to add an amendment, addendment to what you said about Nassau. For some reason, Kiprasov found a way to get driven to that uh, rink and back to that hotel. Well, he got a lot of work in the net for us when he played for us, so he, we needed him to be uh, fully energized. And <laughs> I agree. He was uh, he would be able to, um, uh, but then once you so if you never so one the the more we walk back and forth, you know, fans would be like, "Oh, I've seen him already," or whatever. I've got his autograph, so it wasn't as big a deal if they ever saw Kipper after after the first year or two that he didn't, he would have been, he would never have made it to the game on time. Literally, he would, uh, he, he was, uh, you know, such a star. And then they never, you know, we go there once every two years or whatever. So he, after he missed the first year there, I didn't blame him. I didn't blame him. He would never have made it over and, and had any energy left. 
All right. We promised you questions. We're going to your questions. Text 960-960. Regular text and data rates may apply or use the Twitter hashtag UnitedByCommunity. I'm going to start off with an apology. We have been flooded. We won't get to them all, but we'll get to as many as we can, and we will alternate. Lanny, I start with you. Do you miss playing for the Medicine Hat Tigers? That comes from Justin. Well, it, that was really where I got my start. Uh, yes, I played for the Lethbridge Sugar Kings, who no one knows what was a sugar king. <laughs> um, and uh, then Medicine Hat, uh, it, it was really probably the best time of your life. And I'm sure Jerome will say that as well, uh, playing in Kamloops. Uh, but Med Medicine Hat is where I met Ardell. Uh, so that was the start of the rest of my life. Now, 45 years of marriage later, we're still hanging out together. Awesome. All right, Jerome, this one comes from Nathan. Congrats on being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Who was the first person you called beside family when you found out you were being inducted? <laughs> um, well, I guess, uh, you know, definitely family first. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I guess it's, uh, when I did get the call from Lanny, it was, uh, an amazing experience and a huge honor. Um, but I, I was a little bit late, so <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> I, I thought I had two more hours before the call was coming and I didn't, you know, I was kind of like a little bit antsy that morning and I went to rent a vehicle we were going to go mountain biking. So I rent, I went to rent a truck. And so I was by myself and we had a plan later to, to be at the house. Uh, my in-laws were in town. My dad was uh, over my, I believe my mom might've been, she might've been out of town, but my dad lived close. So they were going to come over. And I talked to Peter Hanlon and he said, I had, he gave me a time of a window. And I thought, Lanny, I'm sorry. I thought it was at least another hour and a half later. And I was in the, the guy was showing me, around the truck and we were doing it and my phone rang and it was a Toronto number or I believe so. And I thought, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a reporter or somebody wishing me well, I'm not sure, you know? So I just, I just ended it. And then <laughs> he's still showing me around. It came again. I thought, nah, I, I can't do it. End it. And then by the third time I started, to I was like, this isn't, this isn't normal. So then I looked and I was like, oh my God. You know what I mean? And Lanny left me a message, a text message, call me. And I was like, I, I, I got the car rent, like right at <laughs> rental. I called him from in the car rental or in the car, the truck by myself. And uh, uh, it was a great conversation and, and one I'll never forget and made it fun. But so the first person I called after was Peter Hanlon to, uh, you know, to give him a little bit of uh, friendly <laughs> flack about the timing, you know, that <laughs> so, uh, so that would probably be, yeah, that he would be the guy and uh, he's a good friend of mine and, and he helped me a ton over the years. Um, but, and sometimes I was tardy, but this one, I am definitely, that was on him. And uh, uh, so he was the first person. Ladies and gentlemen, this is United by Community Day. This is the kind of story you're not going to hear anywhere else. All right, Lanny, back to you. Oh, this one's a bit current. Um, how would you rate Sam Bennett's mustache game? Uh, do you know what? I loved his mustache. In fact, when he shaved it off the first time, I said, Sam, grow it back. Like, that's yours. You you own it. And so then he grew it back. And I think he plays better with it than without it. When's the last time you didn't have it? Uh, 46 years. I I grew it in 1974 and have never shaved it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 